A good text engine is an essential part to making a good game, whether it's a platformer or a top-down RPG. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to create a simple but great text engine within Scratch that you can implement into your games. Let's get started. Before we start coding, we need to properly set up our costumes. So head over to your costumes tab and start off simply by making a new costume and calling it lowercase a. And then we're going to use our text tool and type in a capital A and align it to the center of our editor. Now, we're going to repeat this process for all the letters in the alphabet. So we're going to make a new costume called lowercase b and type in a capitalized b inside the editor, which I'm currently doing right now, but really slowly. And it can get a bit time consuming, but it will be worthwhile once you finish. So I'm just gonna time lapse through myself doing it very unsuccessfully. So when you're finally done with the setup, we can start coding. So head back to your code tab, and we are going to create a new block or function called type text at x, x, y, y. Then click on OK. Now we're going to create a couple more variables um, called x for the sprite only, y for the sprite only, and hashtag, not surprisingly, for the sprite only. Now within our function, we're going to say go to x, x, y, y. And then we're going to set our x and y variables to x and y, which will save the position of, you know, the sprite, which will be helpful later on. We will also set our hashtag variable to zero. Then we'll drag in a repeat loop and make it repeat the length of text times, which is basically the amount of letters in that text. And we're going to quickly make a new local variable called asset and set it to the letter hashtag of the text. So it's basically going to go through the um, sentence that we want it to say. Now, we'll obviously have to change our hashtag by one before, otherwise it will be um, the letter zero of text, which is nothing, right? So what our loop does now is that it cycles through each individual letter and sets the asset to that letter. So using this, we can create a clone of ourselves, and the clone will be able to know what letter it'll have to switch to. It can simply switch our costume to the asset, which is, you know, its current letter. Now we're going to create a new function for the clone called clone setup. Make sure to click on run without screen refresh. And we're going to drag that under our when I start as a clone hat block. Now inside this function, we are going to switch our costume, you know, to the asset. And we're going to change our X by a certain value. So, you know, it won't stick together as, you know, the code runs. So if we test it out right now, you'll see that everything is kind of clumped together, right? Because each clone is changed by 10. So, you know, all the clones just stick together. But we can solve this problem by changing each clone by hashtag multiplied by another number. So each next clone will have a bigger value of hashtag and therefore they will move further apart. Now, this still has a problem. For example, if I type a really long thing in our function, then the clones start clumping on the edge of the screen because Scratch doesn't allow them to go further. Now we can try to fix this by changing the initial starting position of the text, so I'm just adjusting the x value here, but then you can see that sometimes you just might have a lot to say and, you know, you don't want to be limited to just, um, 480 pixels in width. 
Now I found a solution to this which was to replace the multiplication sign with a repeat hashtag loop which does the exact same thing because multiplication is just repeating the same thing like for a certain amount of times. Now the difference is that we can plug in an if statement and say if that the x position of the clone is bigger than a certain value let's say 175 then we're going to set our x back to the initial um, starting position of the text so it's gonna go back to um, that position and then we're going to change y by a negative value so you know it's line spacing right you can see the clones kind of typing downwards so if we run a project now boom the clones kind of go downwards as they reach the limit of the screen now you can adjust these values yourself as you can see right now the clones are a bit too close to each other so you can simply make the y value a bigger negative value to make it look more aesthetically pleasing now we only have one last big problem to solve if we try to put spaces within our text you can see that it doesn't really turn out well. So how do we solve this? Well, if you go to your costumes tab and make a new costume, we're going to rename it nothing. So just delete everything inside and just leave it blank because, um, you know, spaces are blank. So don't draw anything inside either. And at the beginning of our type text function, we're going to say switch costume to nothing. And voila, it works now. We have functional spaces. So that is the basics of the text engine. Now there are a lot of extensions you can do from this point. For example, if you want special symbols or punctuation marks or numbers, simply go to the costumes tab and name the costume whatever you want to type and then simply just drag the corresponding um, letter or number or symbol into the middle of the editor. And if you want text to progress each other when a special key is pressed, then simply follow what I'm doing on the screen. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it or learned something new. Um, feel free to like or subscribe if you enjoy my content. And stay tuned for more Scratch tutorials. Bye bye